Why is it on the countdown screen? Because every stream starts like that. Welcome back to the MPCNC live build stream series. Yesterday we ended this stream off with uh, basically this entire thing built, you know, the, the, the frame more or less built, but I figured, or I, I learned that I hadn't printed some of the parts that I actually needed. So um, welcome everyone who's already been uh, chatting along in live chat. So yes, the um, who Bruce Mangies is uh, suggesting that yes, I printed these on some printers in parallel. So I did uh, do that actually. So these were printed on two Mark III's, obviously. Um, one with a broken part cooling fan. So this one actually looks kind of bad. I'm, I'm hoping it's gonna work. Let me see, that should work if I switch over here. Yeah, so this one is uh, the quickest, sturdiest print setting on the Mark III with a broken part cooling fan. It kind of still worked out. This is regular 0.15 millimeter settings. With the dust filament Galaxy, Galaxy Multicolor. Not sure what exactly it's called, but I now have all the parts. And I have also acquired two baggies of merchandise uh, from my local uh, metal store or no, metal shop, whatever they're, they're called. So these are, let me check. Eh. Why is it so hard to open? Yeah, so these are some wood screws for the base for the feet. Um, these are gonna screw this down to this, uh, well, to this MDF and OSB base. And the others, well, let's just make this quick. There you go. Uh, the others are some pan head screws because I did read ahead and I did check where, you know, in which places you do actually need these flatter screws. And the only one that really stood out to me was uh, in these posts, in these feet right here, basically. So these are the ones that, um, as you can maybe see right now, these look, yeah, it's, it's barely visible, but these rods are actually riding on the screw heads and that is not great. So we are going to fix that um, right now before we get started. So I'm laying these out um, to give me a rough idea of where everything goes so that I don't mix up these uh, left and right uh, rails with the matching carriages on them. So like this. And thankfully these were not screwed down so I can very easily just remove them and redo that. So today, in today's stream, we will be building the, well, first we'll be looking for the, uh, where did I put that thing? Oh, I took it next door. Okay, I will need to grab that in a second. Uh, today we will be building the Z-axis. So the one that, where's my, where did my tools go? Um, the Z-axis, the uh, vertical axis for this machine. Sorry, too much going on at the same time here. And that will be another rather complex assembly. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm rather confident on the entire thing because it, it looks like it's not, you know, it's that there's no potential collision. Because apparently I learned that um, these screws, these uh, cap head screws that I'm using basically everywhere, these are not the ones that you're supposed to use. You're supposed to use like the pan head, the flatter type, and it can show you the difference in height. It is not, it is not a whole lot. So compare those two in their blurriness. Um, yeah, the one on your right is the one that I've been using and the one on the left is, the, is the one that I guess you should be using. 
there's not much difference, but it's enough to have the, um, what's it called, to have these um, rails sit on the screw heads and kind of mess up positioning. And also I, I checked, like, I think the rails actually transmit the, well, there's, that's the only thing that could do that. They also transmit the tensioning force of the belt. So if you actually have tensioned belts, then you would have these ends kind of slide together um, just by the force of the uh, of the belt. So I I don't want to keep switching belts, uh, switching bits. I'll grab my cordless screwdriver real quick. Um, one thing, if you get a um, some sort of a a cordless drill or something really great thing is just get two because if you drill and then screw something together that is just invaluable not having to switch bits that's just that's that's so convenient so i'm gonna have one of these with the regular phillips head and the other with the mm, this one with the hex head so that I can go back and forth and assemble these really fast. Would half height screw heads work? I believe so. So you can also get these cap head screws as a, uh, well, slim version. I do believe I have some in, I actually do have some of those here in my bin. Do I? I have some pan head hex, but yeah, those should also work, but they're not standard parts and they do have a smaller size hex, which means the, the hex key is more likely to uh, spin. Yeah, that is looking, I mean, it's not looking like this is so, it's not looking like that's such a massive difference, but there we go. Like there's a screw head down there and it's just, ooh, you, you can, you can, barely see it shimmer through so it's just barely underneath the surface but um yeah countersunk countersunk what countersunk screw heads it looks like there's a countersink in here but i don't think that's for the screw head itself i think the the countersink that you're seeing in this part is or around the screw head is just for printability at least that's what it looks like Uh, DIN 6912, probably, yeah. Sounds about right. So yeah, the, the inside here is definitely flat and not for a uh, countersink screw. Have it with two heads so you can just move to exchange. Yeah, I had one. That is interesting. They mix the screw, they mix the head types. Here's a short educational message um, because this is something that is, that I've never really, I mean, yeah, I, I know why they exist, but um, this is something that's just uh, pacing me off about these uh, Phillips. Is this, oh, that is actually stretched. Okay, let's switch back to that. That looks a bit better. So if you look at those two screw heads, the one over here actually has those small little extra like notches between the main uh, drive geometry. It's probably really hard to make out. So yeah, maybe you can see that. And this one does not. This one is just the plain Phillips head. And this one is actually the PZ, the posi drive. And the bits for those actually look different as well. They're different heads. And the wrong bit is not going to engage properly in the, um, in the wrong type of head. So if you look at the bit, this is the, come on, where are you? There you go. This is the posi drive uh, bit that has those small little blades between the main blades. And this is the Phillips head that does not have those. So use, look at, look at your screw heads, use the correct bit because it's, it's gonna make a difference in how well they grip, uh, how much fun you're gonna have screwing down these Phillips heads, which you, you're never gonna have because they're just, I don't know, Phillips needs to die. But uh, I could not find, yeah, for everyone pointing out, I should, should have been using Torx. I was looking at Torx options, but the, you know, the, the local shop that I got them from did not have those. Because again, pan head screw heads are just a, they're especially um, 
They're a specialty item. You don't usually use those. Use cap head or use the regular hex head, but pen is just, I don't know, rare. I guess I should actually torque limit this somewhat. What do you think about the, the regular Allen, the in-hex style? Well, works. That goes on like this. I do prefer Torx over Allen, as you should, but um, I'm fine with that over, uh, over Phillips. Like Phillips, nobody should be using Phillips screws. Like for real. By the way, I, 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 I really like having small shops like that available where you can just go in and buy, you know, a bunch of screws for 75 cents. Um, that shop, Homberg, which is like a five minute drive from me, they have everything. They have like a massive metal warehouse with profiles and, and sheet metal and everything you could dream of. Um, they also sell you welding equipment, like I, I got my, my bottle of argon from them. Um, and you can just exchange it there. Um, they have everything you could you could possibly want, like screws. They also have tools. They have like the entire Makita and Bosch professionals. Uh, I mean, the entire Makita and Bosch professional range. They're not the cheapest, but like just being able to go there and and have it right then and there is worth a whole lot. Yep, the other thing. Good flathead screwdriver, yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. So these go back on like this. That is fixed and now hopefully we're not gonna rub. 200 grams of M3 to M8, yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, if you don't have a shop like that, just have some at hand, just have like a, an assortment like you know I, I showed you last time it's having like a, a few boxes like that where you have you know a bunch of different m3 to m6 screws in there is it's just so useful because waiting on screws is not fun it just stalls you in any sort of project you might do so these go on like that then we need the spacers color coordinate coordinated with the yellow bit towards the outside like that. That's the wood screws, we need those later. And then this last one. I wish I had a, a wider angle lens for this camera, but I just I just sold my, my wide angle. Um, so that was the that was the one that goes over here. And then this one goes over here. Okay. So now we are all fixed up from where we left off yesterday. Whew. Cool. Hey Ryan, uh, Ryan from V1 Engineering is here as well. Actually, let me assign mod rights real quick, um, just to give that highlight and to, um, to validate that yes, this is uh, Ryan V1 Engineering, the guy who actually designed this entire machine. Okay, so let's jump back into the, there we go, into the website v1engineering.com base. So base is basically where we left off yesterday. And we still needed to set the outer dimensions from corner to corner, usually the same as your X and Y rail length that was entered into the calculator. Okay, so basically we measure from, can we open this in a new tab? Not really. We measure from the outside edge, I guess. So from here, which is really hard to see, from this edge out here to the other, to the other one over here. Cool. The build is going fairly well. So what do we say? We said 79, right? So that is 79 spot on. And I'm guessing yeah, 79.0. It's gonna get squared up later. 
But for now, let's drop these on. So these are the newly printed parts and I'm hoping they're gonna fit and it feels like they do. So I believe it's the same as with the top where you have these, these little braces pointing towards the outside because I think that's where the, the belt gets tensioned. So that goes over here. And now we have the same situation as before where we have uh, those half traps for the nuts. So maybe if I walk forward, we can get a camera. I should really get a camera that can autofocus. <laughs> so no, not you. You, yes. So on the top, we just have a straight round hole and at the bottom, we have like a half hex profile that is that probably fits uh, the Imperial hardware, but it does not. <laughs> it does not fit M4 screws all that well. Why is 3D Iceland getting blocked? When, where did I put my mouse? Can I? I'm just looking if I can like authorize some people to, the, to just never get blocked in chat. Is YouTube, I mean, as much as YouTube moderation is helpful in just digging through comments and in digging through like the, the bulk of, of stuff, it can sometimes be a bit aggressive. Yeah, this is probably pretty hard to show. Like I will need to do the same thing as I did before with just having um, like something jammed underneath this nut in the bottom here. Imperial slips as well. Yeah. Okay, so unfortunately this is this is like too loose to actually hold the nut in place, but too tight to fit a socket in there. Uh, either way would have been fine, like if it was tight enough to actually hold a nut, that would have been great. But you know, if it was loose enough to just you know use a socket, that would be great too. But as you can see, like there's no way we're gonna fit a socket in there. Hoping the camera can uh, can decide to focus at some point. So. I'll just get this nut started and then use a screwdriver to kind of keep it from turning. There we go. I'm not sure how I should uh, should precisely position these when, it, when it's slipping so much, but I guess it's like it's slightly held in place already. Okay. Um, by the way, today we needle nose pliers also, we, I, I don't think those are, uh, maybe they're going to fit a bit better than on the other, um, on the other holes on the feet, but still too tight for needle noses. Oh, well, I can try. Um, by the way, today we do have, if you've, if you've noticed, probably nobody has noticed yet, but uh, today's stream is 1080p only, and that is because it is set to ultra low latency. Needle nose? Nope, needle nose does not work. Um, usually these streams are 4K 30p, which means we have the 4K image at 30 frames a second. Oh! Needle nose does work, okay. Uh, for a 4k frame at 30 frames a second, but YouTube can only process that with the normal latency, which means or with low latency, which means it's like um, It's about a 25 second delay with the ultra low latency we get I, I measured just a second ago we get seven seconds of delay. So Basically you guys type something I see it and then you guys see my reaction seven seconds later instead of 20 which is which is great. I think only three seconds. I think the player is actually showing it a bit too... Um... Oh, okay, that is super tight, so we don't need to go that tight. The player does show you how much latency it's, it's currently um, producing, but I think that is a bit... That doesn't account for the entire processing chain. So... Eh. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's much, much quicker, um, which means if, if I ask you guys something, then you know, I can actually see your reaction in time instead of like having moved on at that point. Um, people are asking what this print material is. This is all PLA. This specifically is um, dust filament, multicolored galaxy, 
Multicolor galaxy, yeah, that's what it's called. Um, and that is a, a multicolor transition spool, but the other stuff is just random bits of PLA that I had sitting around. And really, again, like I said in the intro video, PLA is kind of nice for this because it's, it's rigid, it's strong. It's not great for like performing under load or for, for performing under load for extended periods of time. So we're gonna have to see how well it holds up with these screw heads uh, pressing against it. And for the spindle mount, which I may actually reprint tomorrow. But for just static stuff, it should be, it should actually be really good. This might actually be, well, it's being held in place uh, on the other side, but this <laughs> might be tight enough already. Because you can, you can see it pull, well, you, you can't, but I can. Maybe you, you can kind of see it, but it's actually getting pulled up. It's actually biting into the red plastic part. No, this side is not anymore, but yeah. Uh, is this a large 3D printer build? You could use it as a 3D printer technically, because a 3D printer is just a, a three-axis plus extruder machine anyways, but uh, first and foremost, this is going to be a CNC machine that actually well, cuts stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm planning on using it for plotting like aluminum plates or contouring and, and drilling hole patterns and those sort of things. Like again, I'm hoping it will do aluminum. That's my, that's my goal. But yeah, you, you, you can use this for anything. It's just a motion platform, essentially. Uh, uh, okay. Monkey wrench. Uh, the, the, it's, that's probably too fat. The, um, what are they called? They have an actual name, but yeah, the, the adjustable spanners. I think those would, I think I should actually adjust before I screw it down. Uh, those probably are too tight for what I'm trying to do here. So we're at 79.1, which means we need just like a few light taps. A hammer is actually a surprisingly effective adjustment mechanism. 79.0, perfect. If you're somewhat careful with it. So I'm tightening these to setting eight on this driver. Uh, setting eight is well, probably not eight Newton meters, but it roughly correlates with, uh, with Newton meters. So probably, probably a lot, but I don't want these to slip. Okay, so now we've adjusted uh, the X length, which means we've also clamped these ends of the Y rails in place. Oh, and now, okay, because these actually grip fairly well. I can't just, well, I can't twist them, but there's gonna be, there's gonna be marring on these tubes. So now we can't just rotate these, same here. Um, now, how do I do this? I guess I got to clear off a bit to rotate this. Live latency 0, 0.0 seconds. Ah, that might be pushing it. Yeah, everything can be a hammer, definitely. But the, again, I love these these Bosch drivers. I've 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 worked through a, f a few of these, so this this is not my first set. But uh, they are actually rated for ah. Oh, there goes my screwdriver. They are actually rated for, I think, a like a two meter or three meter drop. So I'm thinking, like, if if I can drop these onto concrete, and I, I did drop these before, uh, not intentionally, but I have dropped these, and if they're okay with that, then like, I'm I'm sure I can use them to lightly tap some stuff in place. I don't know. Smooth, but not the best resolution. Yeah, it's um, it's super ultra low latency trying that out for today. I did do a quick Twitter poll and it was 30% preferring or wanting the, um, the higher resolution versus 70% saying, hey, we want the low latency, even if it means dropping down to 1080p. So 
So this, what's up with this? So this is at 70, oh, there we go. I just need to measure to the right spot. And this is at 79 as well. Cool, so let's get this tightened down. Building one for Christmas. I guess, I guess that works. Treat yourself to a new CNC. Fun for the whole family. He's gonna have so many issues squaring this machine. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll try. Um, I mean, this base should be square. This base was cut on a panel saw, which I assume is relatively good. And my previous experience with that exact panel saw um, was actually pretty good. So I believe this base is square-ish, so I can just align it at least to one corner and then adjust the other one. Or align three corners to the outside and then uh, just, uh, just, uh, just adjust the last remaining corner. But squaring is a part of the regular assembly procedure, which means you're measuring diagonally and then um, you basically squish that parallel parallelogram. What's the work area? The work area is going to be, um, well, based on the calculator, the work area is going to be about uh, 530 by 530 millimeters. So half a meter, what is that? Two, one, one foot and some inches, eight inches? I don't know. Um, but I don't know how much of that is actually going to be usable because of tool mount and collisions and other stuff. But I think we should be somewhere in the uh, 500 millimeter range. Hello back to New Jersey. Oh, by the way, US. Uh, I tweeted that out two days ago or so. Um, I will be at Earth at the East Coast Rep Rep Festival. Um, you guys probably have seen some of the videos from Murph, which was early this year, and it's in the Midwest, apparently. That's what you guys call that area. Um, I measure from here to here. That's perfect. But the Earth is on the East Coast, so it's... Baltimore? I don't know. I don't know US areas, but somewhere in that area. So I'll be flying into Washington and then uh, I'll be there for both days. So hoping to see some of you there. I really did like Murph this year um, and I tried to get Stefan to go uh, to Earth as well because he did enjoy uh, Murph a lot. But he was, unfortunately he was busy, he already had something planned. But uh, yeah. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun either way. Do we get like a Streamlabs notification for the Super Chat? There we go. Uh, this thing pops up like way before Streamlabs registers it. So thank you, Jared, for the two bucks. Um, glad you're enjoying the, the live streams. Uh, live streams are kind of a, a thing that not everyone is into, but glad you're liking it. And thanks for the, for the cup of tea. So, same here again. Like, let me just push this back a bit so you guys see a bit. Um, so 79 again on this side. And then because this is the last corner, this is the last corner that we've... Look at this thing, it's crazy. This is the last corner that we're tightening down. I also need to measure from this other corner over here to make, to make sure that we're 79 millimeter, uh, centimeters on both sides. So just a bit further back. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that should be perfectly aligned now if I... Yeah, so this piece is in the right position. So I can still slide this rail... Oh, not left to right. I should probably check it before I firmly tighten it down. Um, there's questions about V-slot aluminum on this. Now, you could probably use V-slot. However, um, I believe that this stuff, because it's steel, 
um, and it, because it's a it's a 25 millimeter diameter size on the outside, it may actually be a bit more rigid than aluminum uh, V-slot. Believe it or not, but uh, aluminum V-slot is actually pretty pretty floppy if you just use the standard 2020 uh, profiles. And especially when it comes to rotation, like, because it's, it's just, it's not a close profile. It's, it's just like this. If you look at a V-slot profile, I happen to have one right here. Um, basically, so that, yes. Uh, basically the only torsional stiffness, so if I try to twist it like that, comes from that inside square. All this outer material doesn't do anything. This is just like a 10, eight millimeter square profile, which does not give you a whole lot of torsional strength. And that sometimes is actually the pitfall of, of some designs, but also because it's not a whole lot of material to start, it's also not, not too stiff for, um, or stiff when it comes to bending for what its uh, material uses. So the stiffest profile you can actually get in aluminum is just regular square tubing. That's both for torsional stiffness and um, for bend strength or bend stiffness. So that is, um, if, if you want to build something like this and really if you can make it work with round tubing, you can also make it uh, work with, with, uh, with square tubing. And at that point, it's, there's, like, there's like no point going for V-slot. Um, this design, I think specifically um, only at one point, which is the Z-axis assembly, requires there to be some sort of mounting to the actual rail. All the rest is just clamped to it. So yeah. And of course it's aluminum. Yeah, aluminum is uh, a lot softer than steel. So this is stainless steel with a two millimeter wall thickness. Can you, can you hear that hum? Uh, probably not, but there is a nice hum to it. Yeah, steel is just steel. Steel is just nice. Square tube plus linear rail. Well, you, you can do that, but it's just, I mean, low cost and stuff. <laughs> I guess that goes out the window once you add linear rail. Though, to be honest, linear rail has come down in price really significantly. And the cheap stuff is actually, is okay in quality, most of it. Does it function with plastic tubing? Um, Moise, Moise Joker. Um, no, it does not because, well, I mean, you could build it with plastic tubing, but you shouldn't because plastic tubing just is way too soft. Unless you wanna uh, build a really, really small machine and use it as a pen plotter. Probably for that even, it's, it's, too, it's too floppy, but plastic tubing definitely will not work. Okay, last one. So this is slightly snug. Um, let me give it a quick remeasure. 79, that is perfect. And 79 on this one as well. Very nice. I'm half a millimeter off, but... Well, oh, I, also have, I also have this camera. Cool, I can actually show you what I'm doing. If I, if I zoom in here... Ah, it zooms to the wrong spot. Hmm. Set that up wrong. Uh, linear rail for the z-axis? Possibly, yeah. So the z-axis is actually one of those elements of a CNC, of a, you know, of this sort of, of a CNC um, that can often be a, a weak point. Simply because there's a, there's a lever now. You, you're attaching it to some point on your cross beams and then you're kind of hang, hanging off of that. and you know, any force you have down here, say this is like the, uh, the tool that you're cutting stuff with, any force that you have here now gets amplified and, and creates a moment further up. So the Z-axis, yeah, needs to be fairly rigid and fairly, fairly stiff, but the, the way that the Z-axis is just mounted into the machine and kind of um, how the forces are transferred into the rest of the machine also make a huge difference. So just adding linear rail, maybe, maybe isn't the, the only, um, well, the, the only solution to, to getting a, a more rigid machine. Okay, Matthew, thanks for the 299. Uh, loving this justification to buy a 3D printer. Well, buy two spools of filament along with it, and there you go, there's your, there's your printed parts for, 
for the CNT, a CNC. Thank you very much. All right. Cool. So this is, it's not square. What is it? It's um, the lengths of each of these tubes is now the same. So it still could be off like so, and you can actually see how that can still deform and the other direction as well. So it's not square, but at least it's the same length. Measure your diagonals. I believe those get measured as soon as you bolt it down to the table and that happens later. So we're not bolting this down to um, the wooden frame yet but at that point I believe we, we do tighten down or we adjust the height of this entire thing then we do tighten down these um, these clamps on the top of these feet uh, measure the height and then we measure the diagonals I, I believe that's that's how that works okay so double check your dimensions um, we just did the x y dimensions and then, um, yeah, we have finished the base. Just 37 minutes in and we can move on to the Z axis or Z axis. Guys, how do, how do, you, how do you say Z? Is it, or Z, is it, is it Z for you or is it Z? Is it, it's like a regional thing, right? Where some people in some parts of the world say Z and some say Z. Like, I don't know, English is weird sometimes. Z axis Z Z Z. Okay, I see. I see a lot of Z's. All right. Please do not attach anything to this assembly above the tool mount. Attaching cable chains worst place. Okay, we'll not try to do that. Uses number six. So we start with yeah. This is the part where we actually need to drill some holes in the tubing. But we start with these, and I will actually need to grab the uh, the super glue. Set SETA? Set Okay, I guess there's a there's an international component to that as well. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because the, the German version is actually Z. So it's I guess the, the Z is, is more Canadian? I don't know. But uh, yeah, super glue. Hoping this stuff is still, oh yeah, it has somewhat gelled up, but it's still, it's still good, it's still okay. Still usable. There it is, good old super glue bottle. So we will be super gluing nuts into, this frame is in the way. We will be gluing some nuts into this centerpiece for the, Z axis. Um, essentially the way this works, I believe, is we have our tool mount, which is one off of Thingiverse 55 millimeter MPC and C. If someone knows the uh, Thingiverse ID for that, please uh, let people know in chat. Um, that sits on here. And then we have the other side of a clamp that now then clamps the, uh, the tool down, the spindle. And I've got two of these. Well, I actually printed three. But we're gonna have two of these and those get screwed into this base plate basically. And for that, there's gonna be a bunch of nuts embedded in the back right here. So, yep, this basically um, is gonna be a bunch of gluing because you don't want these uh, to glue, uh, to glue, to drop out. So, yeah, let's, let's do dry fit. That's actually, that's actually relatively snug for once. Is that, is that a part that was specifically made for M4? It's actually not coming out. I think there are, there are like one or two parts that, um, are, that are actually designed for metric hardware where you can get the, the, the Imperial and the metric version. This might be one of them. I'm just adding a, a little dab of super glue on the edge here because you really just need these nuts to stay in place. You don't need to like super fasten them uh, into these holes. Oh, come on. Is that as far as they go? Looks like it. Yeah, roughly. 
I'll probably glue my fingers together. Uh, just push the nuts in, and nuts in, and then secure uh, secure them in place. I think my glue is a bit too uh, too old and too stale for that because it's not really it's not super runny anymore. Though that might be the better option. Um, this one doesn't go in all the way. Ah, it's fine. So, oh, I, I counted out the right amount of, of nuts. So I'll, I'll just keep going like that. Worked on the other ones and, and the glue is just a little extra dab of, uh, of security. Is this PLA or PTG? This is all PLA, every single part, including this spindle mount. Again, if I have to reprint stuff, um, I can. Just hoping it's not gonna fail during a, a, a mill job, but should be, should be okay. Um, again, the spindle mount, I probably will need to reprint out of something a bit more temperature resistant. Cool, that's it. Nope, it is all PLA, it is not all PTG. So nuts are in, all in place, so now we can screw stuff to it once it's mounted. So number one, insert the nuts facing the right direction. Oh yeah, I did do that, I hope. That does not depend on glue at all. Okay, now the nut traps. <laughs> what a fantastic choice of, of naming this part. There's one, there's the other. So this holds two nuts in place so that they won't go anywhere while you uh, screw these down. So basically, um, these will sit inside the, um, the tubing. And this still needs to get deburred. I do have my deburring tool here. This sits inside the tubing. Well, I guess the other way around, but I, I want to be able to pull it out again. Inside and then presses these nuts that will be embedded in this part against uh, the surface so they can screw something to this tubing. I will still need to drill these holes, but that's the basic idea there. This part works with either size nuts. Nice. Yeah, I did print these parts a while ago. I think it was a few months ago that I printed all these, but I just now found, well, let me say, took the, the time to actually build this. Small dab of super glue. There we go. And then in it goes. Easy as that. Yeah, well if um if it would stick down then that would be that would be even better. Um, how much infill? Well, here's the thing. Um, if you're relying on infill for your strength, then you're doing something wrong. First and foremost, you should be cranking your perimeters. Um, that is both like top, bottom, solid surfaces and the actual perimeter settings because those contribute the most to strength. Um, max out those first, like up to a reasonable limit. Like if, if you have three millimeter thick uh, walls and it may be time to look into using a bit more infill, but the walls really are where you can get the most, like the most bang for your buck. Like for the same amount of material, uh, more walls will give you more strength and stiffness uh, in that regard. Want to buy a whole box of, <laughs> of nylocks and, and socket head screws? Yeah, the, it's nice to look at, which, which is why I, I do recommend just having a full battery full of uh, M3, M4, M6, and M5 hardware. Don't forget the M5s. Though most of the time actually I'm, I'm using M3 and M4 and, and skip the M5 and then go straight for M6 for the larger stuff. So I'm hoping this holds. Yes, no. I guess I'll just have to let this cure for a, a hot second. Yeah, and if I if I had some really fresh super glue that would just run down in there, that would be that would be even better. But I don't. The super glue lasted a, a really long while. Usually they go stale after half a year and just go super jelly. Jelly? Gel? They they gel up. But um, this one's been holding up fine for longer than that. But now, ah, finally it's giving in. 
Cool. How much does all of it cost approximately? So uh, Ryan from V1 Engineering has on his website that it's about 500 US dollars um, for everything, including if you buy the, the, printed, um, the printed parts. I did source it myself. I don't have a, a running total for how much it costs. Like it, it always depends on your, on your choice of components. Uh, you can buy cheap parts, you can buy expensive parts. Um, I bought what I could get, like this, this tubing is not the cheapest stuff, like the conduit that you can get in the US is like eight bucks for the entire thing. Um, I paid, I think 60 bucks, 60 euros for the entire tubing set. Um, so keep that in mind, regional differences will make, well, will make a difference for, for how much this entire thing costs. Also, I probably will be using the Duet um, and the Duet by itself is already more expensive board than something like the CNC shield which is like a $10 plus driver's uh, set. So yeah, just, just keep that in mind, you can always make more expensive or less expensive choices. All right, insert the nut traps into your cut and drill Z rails, pointed end up, align the holes, get out four screws. Okay, so we need to drill some holes, which we can find in the conduit section. And there is our drill guide. So the length of this conduit, or the length of this tubing because it's not conduit, was determined by the cut calculator. So I don't need to do the travel plus 190. The calculator did that for us. Um, so let me see. D bearing tool, super useful for 3D printing as well. Has this little swivel blade, like a, a dollar off of uh, AliExpress. All you do is you take the two inside and there you go. That is perfectly deburred. Well, not quite. On stainless, it's kind of, uh, it takes three turns instead of two. There's also a, a better reaming tool that you can get, but for these four uh, deburring jobs, this will do. Oh, these parts are sharp. This, is, this isn't the first time that I've uh, scratched my arm on these. Okay, that's good enough. I believe that you also run some wires through some of the other cables, so there's a few more ream jobs there, but ream jobs, haha. Um, yeah, it's, not, it's not a whole lot. Um, score a small X with a grinding disc. Um, drilling stainless is not easy. Yes, I am aware of that. So let's start with the easy part, which is marking where these holes need to go. Now I did think about just doing this in a drill press, uh, in the drill press. Um, I do have a relatively heavy drill press, which makes this entire thing kind of easy, but we should be able to do this with just, ba with, with just basic hand tools. So First, we need to get a straight line on this tubing and a nice trick to get a straight line on a piece of tubing is by using a shim that is not quite the full height and then just aligning that to the tube and now you have a ruler that you can just uh, paint along or draw along. For that I just need my pen. Where is my pen? There's my pen. Black on black. Not really visible. but. There's that, and we need to drill about 10 centimeters off from here, so we just draw a nice straight line right there. Can you see that? Probably can't see it because this stuff is really shiny, but there's a line on there, there it is. So, now we have our line. It really doesn't matter where it is on the, uh, on the tube, but tape, there's our tape. Now the line won't be on center. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, like, that's not how tubing works, right? It's, it's, uh, it's round, you know? So there's that. Now we need the dimensions, which is 22.5 from the end and then 75 millimeters between holes. And the holes need to be five to seven, um, five to seven, five to eight millimeters, sorry. It would be nice if, the, if those dimensions were just from one end um, so that you can like measure them in one go. 
So I'm going to be doing 22.5 plus 75. Someone do some quick math for me here. Uh, it's 97.5, right? Yeah, sounds about good. 97.5. So there's our second mark. And I can kind of highlight that a bit more. There's our two drill points. Now, um, better use calipers. Ah, these holes are oversized anyways. So stainless does work hard, which means using a center punch is not fantastic, but I will do it anyways, because otherwise the drill is just going to walk all over the place. So I will try. I've not, I mean, I've not tried this before, but I actually need a hammer. Ha, I do need a hammer. Uh, one second. Thankfully, the workshop is right next door, so I can keep walking back and forth. And I don't have to leave you guys waiting for too long. So, there we go. Now, center punch. You can also get these as like automatic center punches if you if you're like into fancy stuff. That's on the money. I mean, these holes don't need to be super precise or anything. Okay. I guess I should have warned you because this is kind of loud on the mic. Yeah. How long is the Z tube? This one is three hundred and ten millimeters um, for a like one twenty millimeter ish. Um, travel distance. I'm not worried that the PLA is going to give uh, over time. If it's not under like massive load, it shouldn't give that much. Um, like this machine is not used in a tropical environment where it's don't hit the punch multiple times. Yeah, uh, this is not going to be used in a tropical environment where it's just like super hot all the time. This is probably going to be sitting in this basement, which is usually around. Let me, let me check right now. Uh, 22. <laughs> okay, so right now it's 22 degrees Celsius. Um, by the way, that the hygrometer on this thing is totally off. 22 degrees Celsius because lights and streaming equipment and all that. But usually it's, it's a good bit cooler. I think I'm going to start with a three. Um, and yeah, PLA doesn't really give over time that much. Only just got the YouTube notifications. Hmm. Yeah, YouTube can be weird. So let me just check this is not lifting if I'm drilling down. So let's try this. And it's walking. This is walking like crazy. Let's try the, let's try a smaller drill bit. <laughs> this clutch is kind of done. Uh, two. Yeah, so it, what would be really helpful is if you have a mill and if you just mill a small flat on it or if you just file a flat on it. Okay, this one's gripping. I should have really done this on the drill press. Uh, that bit is gonna snap. Okay, I guess I guess to make the the starting flat that should be okay. We can switch over to the three mil. This is a fresh drill bit, I believe. Yeah. By the way, if if you're drilling, um, especially if you have like cobalt drills, like the ones that are uh, like gold colored and stuff. Use some safety glasses, um, because these, when they snap, they do like to explode. There we go. There's one. I guess I should have slightly cooled this, but that went rather well. No lube. I guess I should be using some lube, but... Looking at the drill bit, it's not, it's not too discolored. It's going to be good for all these four holes.
Okay, there's our starting point. Not straight either. Again, these holes, really, they're just through holes. They're just clearance holes for uh, a pair of M4 screws to go through. And if that was... Okay, I need to concentrate here for a second. Come on! Um, if it was particularly important for these to be like straight and precisely positioned, then I would be doing it on the drill press, which I probably still should do. Okay, there you go, starting five. Yeah, now, one thing I gotta say, um, <laughs> you can use a CNC to drill the holes. Yeah, thanks for that tip, Doris. Um, this drill is already dull, perfect. Uh, one thing I gotta say about stainless is it is it is really hard to work with. Like regular steel is just a joy to mill or to um, to work with on the lathe, but stainless is just a huge pain. Yeah, it already ate this three millimeter drill. This one's done for. Um, this is a fresh one. Let's do. This is 6.5. Is this one still sharp ish? Kind of. Um, lube. Yes, 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 lube. Um, I'm just demonstrating like how not to do it. Let's just put it like that. Fantastic Bosch Chuck. Yeah. Okay, um, stainless, loving it. I will actually do this and the other one because we, we do need to drill the other one as well in just the same fashion. I will do this on the drill press. Um, I will need to take a quick break for that because I do need to set up uh, the drill press for that. I'll be right back. Um, that's gonna be like two minutes or so because this is, I mean, this is, this is kind of painful, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to see this. I'll be right back.
All right, that went really quick and easy. Look, I made some holes. These are seven millimeter large. Um, yeah, if you have a if you have a sturdy drill press, and you have cobalt drill bits, this is just done. Very good. Um, so yeah, use a drill press if you have one. If not, you know, make your make your indent, maybe file a flat first, and then try to drill through. Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Right tool for the job, that is uh, correct. And I have, uh, I have learned that over the years, I have acquired way more tools than I probably need, but being able to use with, uh, being able to work with the right tool for the right job, or even the right tool for the wrong job, is just so good. Um, when you can, you, you want to do something, you grab the angle grinder because you need an angle grinder. When you grab um, the random orbital sander because you need the random, random orbital sander. Uh, you need a good jigsaw, you, you grab the jigsaw. That's just, that makes working fun when, when you're not fighting against your tools, um, but you're working with your tools. That is just, you know, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. That, does that work in English? A, I know it's a German saying, but it is definitely hold up or held up. Very, very true. All right. Cool. So we have our holes drilled, which means this drawing now reflects what our part looks like. Five to eight millimeters. Yeah. We drilled a hole that was five to eight millimeters. See where should have did that. Yeah, so there, if, you, if you're using tubing that does not work with these parts, then there is an extra part that you can use. But um, thankfully, these fit inside mine. Is there a direction to them? Doesn't seem to be. So I'll go in like that. Oops, too far. But it was the right hole, at least. What do you do if you push these in too far? I can kind of bounce them out. Just put a pin in here. So here's our... <laughs> I guess I should align these slightly. Yeah. Here is our embedded nuts in the part. Perfect. So if you can get both to show... Yeah. That's that's roughly okay now. I guess that the rest of the parts will... Uh, by cheap, by twice, yeah. Uh, the rest of the parts will align these to uh, the perfect holes. So that's one. And there is the other. There you go. Okay, both in perfect. By cheap use ones. Now there is there is an exception to that rule actually because I either I buy like mid to high end tools like you know the Bosch Professionals, the Metabos, the Makitas, uh, Festool, and those. Not not Festool. Do I have a Festool? No, I have a, a Ryobi. I have a Ryobi. Um, What's the what's the demolition saw the, the the big one? I have I have that thing, but I you know sometimes when I'm when I'm not sure if I'm if I'm going to use a tool too often or if I know I'm I'm like I'm I'm actually okay with using a really cheap version, I will literally buy the cheapest version of that tool. Sawzall, yes, there's a bunch of different names for that tool. I will literally buy the cheapest version of that tool that I can find, and knowing that I'm only going to use it a few times before it breaks or before you know I decide to buy a better one. And then if I if I do end up using it a lot, then I go for that for that nicer version. But yeah, you, you don't you know, or even if you're starting out, just having a tool is better than not having a tool. Having a cheap version of a tool is is better than not having it, for sure. Um, right, screen cap. So we've got that. We've got the rails cut. We've got that assembled. So we're at Z axis. Important to not attach anything, we've read that. So that goes in here and okay, now we mount our spindle mount, our tool mount. Get all four screws started, but leave them extremely loose. Very loose screws. So let's, uh, let's do that. Is there a top and a bottom? Doesn't look like it. Looks like it's fairly symmetrical. I am for all I have 
banned from your channel plus using the drill press like a boss. Have a beer on me. <laughs> All right. Th thanks so much, Daniel. Glad that I'm, I'm spreading knowledge, at least the knowledge that I have out into the world. That, that's always been the, the goal. Yikes, turn it. What? Click. Turn it? Fuck. You know, for once I'm not gonna turn it. <laughs> because this looks, come on, this looks highly symmetrical to me. Some part just split, I, I just heard a crack. Which I'm not a fan of, but seems like everything is still in place. Can tell it should be flush with the bottom. It's not quite flush with the bottom. The the inside part is flush with the bottom, that's for sure, but the outside one is not. Is there a, do, I, do I actually need to flip this? That would be extremely weird. So if I if I try the other part on like that, then it is flush. Okay. There's actually a top and bottom for this? Come on. Or just drilled these holes so far off that it doesn't actually work. Let's try. Let's try like that. So there is a number on here that's F4. So I'm guessing that that does indicate that it's the version for 25 millimeter tubing and the M4 screws. Oh yeah, it's not symmetrical. Come on, come on. Come on, why does this not have to be symmetrical? <laughs> All right, uh, I mean, good, good to have you here in, in chat, but... Um, yeah, I don't think I would have figured that out on my own. There you go, because now it, it does line up with the, uh, with the inside part as far as length goes. It doesn't feel like it's grabbing properly yet. There we go. Okay, here we go. There's a bit of play, of course. You, you can still adjust this because the holes are oversized. So we can match this to the end here if we have to, or match it to the other side. But these are supposed to be left extremely loose. And I quote, um, all right. Moving on to the Z lower bracket, make sure it is seated all the way and not crooked. So the ZZ lower bracket. Got two of these. Should I have printed two of these? Oh yeah, no, one of them, one of them is uh, a motor bracket. So this one has three holes that look like a NEMA 70, NEMA 70 pattern, and I believe that's what it is. This one has a bearing in it, so let's grab one of the many bearings that we have, which are all kind of off frame. Well. Let's grab a bearing. Let's grab a bearing and push that in here. Well, that was that was easy enough. It's just it doesn't drop. It, it does drop out, but it's, it's it's very loose in here. Okay, so whole bearing is in. Make sure it is seated all the way and not crooked. Okay, next up the motor. So again, pan head screws here. I'm going to be using cap head screws. And that is M3 by 10. I did buy a full pack of M3 by 10. This is a thousand screws because we're using like 20 of them. But you know, you can always use M3 by 10. I've used many M3 by 10 in the last months for just projects and random stuff. So, <laughs> oh, that's nice. A thousand screws. So that goes on the other bracket on the other side of the bracket. So these can go over here for now. Put some glue in with the bearing. Um, the thing with the, keep it from wearing your plastic part. So it's reasonably 
I can feel it kind of dinging around. Hoping that's not gonna like over time damage the plastic or, or wear it out. But um, the thing with these bearings is they're very, very oily. So super glue is not gonna do anything for them. Let me see if that fits. No, it does not. So it's, it's probably gonna thread in. Yeah, sometimes it's cheaper to buy a thousand than um, than 20 yeah it, it is always cheaper and for screws especially it is always cheaper to buy one a thousand pack than two like 200 packs even so yeah the hmm, that is interesting that's fairly tight um the largest cost for screws is actually packaging and stuff so i tend to just buy like the largest standard size um Simply because I know sooner or later I, I will be using it. Unless it's like stuff that is actually going to take up space. Um, in which case, like, it's it's kind of pointless to to buy, like, I don't know, a thousand, pa a thousand pack of filament or something. I, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be super cheap, but... <laughs> wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, I somebody, somebody pointed it out to me that I actually need five motors. I prepared three, but... Which way is this actually going to go? I think that should be good. Um, I prepared three, but I, I have plenty. So, yeah. And as you know, with screws and stuff, Ryan is pointing out, yeah, it costs more to back the hardware than the hardware for the most part. Which is the same for screws. If you buy the smaller packs, you're mostly paying for the packaging and for the sorting and stuff. Is that all the way in? Looks like it looks like there's still a tiny gap because these M3 by by 10 screws, I think they're slightly long for what you're screwing into. So uh, it's still threading. Oh that that okay, that thread in the motor might just be done. But okay, barely. Looks good. Um I'm out of frame on the overhead. Um someone asked about what <laughs> Thousand packs of two and a half millimeter hex, yeah. Um, and the 10 mil socket, you do need those. Somebody asked about the equipment that I'm using to stream. That is all listed on the My Gear page that is linked in the description below, including the Elgato Stream Deck, uh, all my cameras. I'm using four Panasonic cameras here, the capture cards, the hardware, all that. If you're interested in that, link below. So motor is screwed in. Next up, the coupler. So that's a nice graphic to see how far this should go, but definitely it should be touching... Should it actually be touching the um, the lead screw? don't think it needs to, but... Uh, I know for sure, so that's I think the next part somewhere here. Um, this shoulder is actually going to be used as a shoulder for the linear... or non-linear, haha. <laughs> Um, for what we're going to be using as a, th as a thrust bearing. So, coupler here, standard spiral coupler. It needs to touch. Okay. Please do not dis delete this live video after ending. I do not delete my live videos after they end. Um, I keep them up on the channel, um, in the playlist for the MPCNC. Is that the right bit? It is not. So that you can watch them at your discretion whenever you want. It's a 2.2. Does the 2.2 actually fit here? It does. Cool. What's the torque on M3 steel bolts and aluminum thread? Um, you know, torque them up not too tightly. Enough so they're snug but not too not so tight that they're actually stripping. Which really comes down to experience. You could use a torque wrench on all these, and I do have a micro torque wrench, but like, there's no point bringing that out for um, for simple stuff like this. So, which way does the I've got the the nut on here already. Which way does it need to go? I guess the nut is separate. 
Yeah, then it does get installed separately. Okay, let's get that off. Where did I, did I, did it take my drill away? Did I actually? Okay. Hmm. I thought I still had my, uh, my drill driver. So in here, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So typically what I like to do with these couplers, if you actually are using the motor shaft, um, I do like to slightly pre-stretch uh, the coupler so that it actually actively pushes against the motor shaft. Um, motor actually needs to touch the threaded rod so as to stop the springy coupler from springing. Okay. So this and then this. Yeah, you can you can actually hear the click on that. So it is touching. Okay. I took the drill through the drill press. Uh, crap. Okay. I'll be good with the driver for now. So we were here. We attached that. Install it as in the cutaway. So I guess that suggests that it needs to be touching. Use no screws on the Z mounts yet. Slide the Z lower bracket onto the C, row, ra uh, C rails open bearing side will face away from the tool mount. Yeah, because this open bearing will face away from... Away from the tool mount. Okay. So that to me means that this bearing will be facing the motor like that. And it actually rides against the um, the coupler right there. And then this one goes on like so, like that. Yes. Okay. That is quite chunky. I mean, it feels really chunky with those twenty-five millimeter uh, tubes. Now, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna hammer this in first. Slightly because <laughs> this is not particularly easy to insert. There we go. No, still. Not sure if that's something with my printed parts. There we go. Okay, now we can kind of slightly adjust that. Wow, that is really tight. I could grab a mallet, but why use a mallet when you have a, a Bosch driver? How far does that need to go on? That needs to go on all the way? No. No, okay. Okay, that, that looks better. <laughs> Loosen the tool mount screws. These screws are loose. Like, I guess I could loosen them slightly more. <laughs> Flathead to, to open the clamps a bit more. But these are, for the most part, still extremely loose. I mean, extremely loose on, on eh, in my understanding. <laughs> yeah, that didn't make it a single bit better. I have a hammer on the table. Yeah, but it's a hammer. It's not a mallet. I don't want to... If I hit these PLA parts with this hammer, like they're gonna break, they're, they're gonna be done for. I don't want to break something today. I want to build something. We're not at we're not at that point yet. So okay, and then this one also just gets clamped on. So it's not like it's resting against the ends of these uh, stainless tubes. So you can still adjust where it sits even if your cuts aren't perfectly straight or if your tubes aren't the exact same length. That's nice. Eh. Anyway, let's, let's try the hammer though. The coupler should be touching the bearing which means we now need to adjust. Yeah, okay, that, that, that does work a bit better. 
Actually, we do have we have that camera as well. Oh, uh, no, that that there. So that should be touching, you see, which means, yep, that should be good. So now the only thing is that this side is kind of protruding. Ah, oh, this is like, this is like super tight. Did the bearing fall out? The bearing did not fall out because it is now, um, no, there. The bearing is now down there. So we have the motor, then the plastic part that it's screwed to, then we have the coupler, and then the bearing is um, down in this printed part. So right up against the coupler. Sound delay the whole stream? Wow. Um, that should not be there. Needs to square the Z axis, okay. Let me see what the instructions say because I think we have the bearing touching. Make sure the couple of touches the bearing so it can support the weight of the tool. Yeah. At this point, hang the assembly off the edge of the edge of a table. Make sure the rails are sitting flat on the table. If if it is not loose, push down on the rails and tighten the tool mount screws. If the rails are twisted, it will rock back and forth. That is bad. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, so we don't need the, uh, wait. I have my, I have my, uh, lead screw install, installed already, but now it's, we installed that here, but now it's gone again. So, uh, I guess I, uninstall it again because I do need to lay it flat against the uh, I do need to lay it flat against the table with that side and that's that's kind of in the way all right let's undo that so this comes out again the interesting thing is um, of course, now this coupler is not tensioned the same way, so the bearing is kind of a... Well, I guess we... I guess the coupler is now pressing against the bearing because it's a springy coupler, and it wouldn't... That, that wouldn't work with any other coupler. Like, you can see that right here. That kind of compresses and... kind of snugs up against the bearing by itself. So now what we should be doing is just laying this down on the table. Too many screws. Bring it down on a table and tightening it down, tightening down the tool mount, which will fix these two rails in place. So let's try that. And I'm guessing these tubes should be more or less flush on the bottom. See, now I'm hammering against metal, which means it's it's fine. There. For the most part. So, let me get it some more torque. Okay, so now it shouldn't rock and it does. So now it shouldn't rock and it does the other way. Because these parts up here are so snug right now, it's actually twisting the entire tool mount. So I can actually, I can literally twist this and twist it the other way, even though these are tightened up as much as I want to tighten them up. So I guess... I guess I'll get it good enough. Because we, we will still be adjusting this side. So 
So this isn't really holding much in place. I didn't do what? What am I missing? XLF is asking why I don't do uh, German videos because nobody's watching them. Like there are five times as many pe people watching English videos than there are watching the German ones. And you can see that on the earlier videos where I did this, the exact same topic in German and English and it was like a five to one difference between uh, the German and the English version. So I stopped doing that because it's, it's not worth it. Right, um, I guess Right, push down and tighten the tool mount screws if the trails, uh, okay. Try to get the gap between mounts to be equal while still touching the coupler and bearing. So the dimension will be different for every build. That's interesting. So I'm guessing we're gonna be making these ends here about flush. And it shouldn't matter whether this is twisted, whether this is not perfectly horizontal. Oh, I guess. Calipers, calipers, calipers. Uh, I will grab some. Ow. <laughs> you guys see that? What's this? Oh yeah, that's another one. Cool. It's like I've, I've got a cat. And all that is, is this, this edge right here. That keeps scratching me. Ow. I grab some calipers, I will be uh, right back. Right, always grab your highest quality calipers for any job. These are super high quality plastic ones, which as you can see that they're even super bendy, like they're not gonna break. But the problem is these are absolute garbage. <laughs> they're cheap, they're like 80 cents. I bought one just to try them, but they're, they're trash. So yeah, even the, I, I've had many digital calipers that broke on me. Um, I've not, I should get a me tutorial at some point, but you know, just getting like a, a basic analog veneer caliper is just, it's a lot better than uh, getting the cheap digital ones. I found these are, these will last you forever basically. Um, and these are just super cheap ones and they're, they're precise enough. <sighs> Stairs, man. All right. Um, I shouldn't use the, the zoom on that. So here's that, that is at how, how exact do I need to be with this? So, okay, there, there's a few things that need to go into this. First of all, this coupler needs to be touching the bearing, which means I, I guess I should be tightening up the motor mount first. So that that's, that's in place, that's just a lockdown. So I think I'll do that first and then I'll adjust the bottom one, um, the bearing one to be in the correct position. So yeah, let's do that. It's, it's kind of nice being able to use the, um, the MPCNC's work surface as a work surface to work on. <laughs> uh, which screws am I using for this? Which screws at the screws? Which screws? Which screws am I using? I don't know which screws I'm using. I'm guessing I'll be using 
M4 by M4 by something. Did I get rid of some screw packs? M4 by 25? No, that's too long. 18? M4 by 18, that's too short. M4 by 20, so I'm guessing I'm, we're using the same M4 by 20 for everything. M4 by 30. <laughs> color scheme, what's up with the color scheme? Color scheme's good, isn't it? Exactly what a, what a three-year-old would like. No. Nope. Yes. So let me see how we can tighten these. People like the color scheme. Okay, like Lego. Yeah, a lot of people have a, have a lot of good memories about Lego, me included. And that's that's like the base colors that you can get, like the the, the red, blue, yellow. Um, what else? I, I <laughs> the, the green, like thin plates, the the grasslands, basically. Those. I guess I should have painted this base green. That would been that would have been really nice. Um, Whatever, like I, like I said in the in the videos, there was no like intention with these colors. I, I just saw what filament, like oof, almost used up spools I had, and I just I just used whatever I had, and it ended up being, you know, primary colors. I was like, okay, well, this might actually look either super horrible together or look somewhat okay. Ah, you decide which one uh, it actually ended up being. Uh, yeah. He's not Travis, man. Okay. That's tight. That's not going anywhere. Can you tell your viewers to go subscribe to me? No, but I can actually tell YouTube to uh, block you on this channel. There you go. Because I don't go to other channels either and go begging for subs. Nope. Which is not something you do. Eh. Okay, so these, these mounts really, anywhere where there's an M4 nut, there either needs to, uh, there, there either needs to be more space so you can get a socket in or less space so that you can, so that the nut actually grabs. But this is like, no. It could be so much better. Can you tell your viewers they're amazing? Yes, I can do that. You guys actually are amazing. That's, that's not even, that's not even a lie. Uh, I feel like just the maker community on YouTube is, is, is a great community to have and, and a great viewership too. Um, there's some really toxic, areas of YouTube, but I'm, I'm really happy with, you know, with, with having found you guys, how, how romantic. Okay, so these, I'm, I'm not snugging up, I'm just getting the nuts on. I'm gonna make a CNC with a CNC. Maybe, possibly. <laughs> You're breathtaking, yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right, there, now, this coupler needs to be snug against the bearing, which it is, barely. So this side, 17.9. I think this old Tony just included how to use calipers in one of his recent videos. Which is a fantastic basic to know. And this is at 18.1. Also, any, any of this old Tony fans around here? I feel like that's one of the most underrated uh, channels on YouTube right now. 
Point, oh, spot on, point 0.9, okay. And the bearing is, yeah, bearing is snug-ish. I think, uh, I think Stefan was even wearing a, a this old Tony shirt at some point. I should get one of those. All right, let's get this snugged up. Actually, this old Tony was one of the inspirations for me to get a, a TIG welder, um, which I may include in some future projects. I'm, I'm just like looking for the right stuff to do with it. I've, I've been learning TIG welding um, to be honest, off of his videos, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he tries to be like the TIG welding guide or the, oh, I'm gonna show you how to build something, but you still pick up so much knowledge just by, by watching others who really know their stuff do their thing. So, right. This is even now, the coupler is mounted without any backlash in there, so. Would it be possible to print something to hold the nut? Well, then that printed part would have to like fit inside the other printed part and okay. well. All right. Collab with him? Uh, I don't know. It's always like, uh, he's such a big YouTuber. Like he's got so many. Uh, what would me little YouTuber dude a collab with someone as great as this whole Tony. Okay, so now we're back at, okay, so I guess that, that, that just doesn't need to be there. Okay, but now we're actually mounting the lead screw. Add the screws and that's the zebra snug slightly, yeah. Did snug them up. Are the rails still flat? Let's recheck. Rails are actually more flat than before. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. At the lead screw, lead screw should touch the motor shaft. Okay. Not the correct engineering solution, um, but it works great. Huh? So here's one, one thing that I read in the assembly notes because um, Somewhere along the, the road, it said that uh, these bearings, so these are just regular skateboard, well, they're called skateboard bearings because they're, they're the type of bearings that are used in skateboards, but they have nothing to do with skateboards. It just happens to be the size. But um, these 608 bearings, which are like the, the most standard bearing these days, they are radial bearings, which means they have a shaft going through them in the center. We can actually use the lead screw for this. And then they ride on a surface. So they roll like this and there's, something pressing down like that onto the bearing, radially, so like that. But because these are deep groove ball bearings, they can also take an axial load and they're actually rated for that. Um, it's actually fine to use them as a thrust bearing. So like they're held in place on the inner ring and then you have something pushing on it like this. So along this direction, they can take 25% of what they take radially as an axial, as a thrust bearing. and. That's not just, oh yeah, they, they can handle it, but we're not rating it. But that, that's, an off, uh, that's an official rating as far as I'm aware for um, deep groove ball bearings like this. So because these are pretty chunky bearings, uh, the 608 can take, well, it depends on the bearing life, obviously. Um, they are fine in this application. So that's, that's actually a proper engineering solution for that. Just saying, just spreading some knowledge, I hope. Um, now, I'm, I've not like fully figured out how because it, this bearing only takes load that is oh, basically that's here. I believe the weight of this something. I need to see this mounted to, to actually figure out which direction load this bearing takes, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what the bearing configuration in the motor is, but I think it should be okay-ish. There are six two five bearings in these stepper motors, um, which are also not the, the weakest bearings, but significantly smaller than um, and weaker than the 608s. But again, to really understand how these how these loads are distributed inside here, 
inside here, inside this entire assembly. I'll have to see it mounted. All right, so now we install the lead screw. Touch the motor shaft. Yes, 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 yes. Loop the lead screw. We will loop that once it's installed because uh, I don't want to get grease all over me, at least not right now. That's that. Yes, there is a... Steppers are also rated for extra load? Y yes, um, they are rated. I, I did not know that, but it does make sense because, I mean, there's exactly the same type of bearing in these stepper motors than we're using in here. So the 625 is also the same deep groove ball bearing, uh, deep groove radial ball bearing to be exact. Um, the difference in push and pull, I believe, is because one side of the stepper actually has a, a spring washer in it. So you can typically pull the... Let me demonstrate. This is kind of fun. I think, or, or you can push. It's one of the two. So I don't want to ruin this table because this is a thin IKEA table. Um, I believe you can actually push... Or, or I may have disassembled this motor already. No! No, because typically there's a small spring wash in the back here. So you can push the motor shaft in and you can actually feel it kind of um, getting pushed into the motor housing. Or it's the front. I, don't, I never know. Oh, this one, this one's rotated, okay. So, yeah, one side is directly hard against the, the bearing and the other side is just uh, spring-loaded. Okay. Um, if you're having a hard time getting the lead screw through the bearing, we did not, so that worked beautifully. The lead screw should at least be as long as the calculator specifies, but no longer than the bottom of the zeros. Let's just double check. So, yeah, we could have we could have gone a lot longer, but yeah, this is good. <laughs> no, I will not be. I will not be selling uh, videos that involve me and Greece. Not for now. Okay, so that is the. Done with the Z-axis. That looked like surprisingly little progress for today. Um, but the Z-axis is done and it does look like a Z-axis. So these, these two parts really, the fact that they're so snug, whew, that does take some work. I, I wish they were just a, a tad bit less snug. That would be nice. It would be nice if it were uh, open source parametric files that you could just go in there and change it. But, well, we're going to have to wait for those. But um, yeah, that was that. We mounted the tool mount, so now we can have, now we, let's, let's actually show what that's gonna look like. So these mounts are gonna go on here. This entire thing will move up and down and um, along with it, the tool, two tool mounts, one, two right next to each other and that clamp down the spindle. Um, right, that's that, and we did swap out, we did square the frame, that was another big part that needed to be done, um, because, well, it's, it's, not, it's not squared, at least it is uh, the same length in every dimension that it should be. It will get squared later on, and it will also get leveled, um, because these feet can still extend out, they're not screwed down yet. But yeah, um, that is gonna be it for today. I'm going to answer two more questions here real quick. Uh, somebody's asking about the power tool. We did answer that last video. This is a Bosch Professional 10.8 volt GSR VEC HX. Just a cordless driver. It's, you can get the same one with a truck. Um, really good. What type of filament did I use? PLA, how much filament? One and a half kilograms, roughly. Um, again, if you're printing these, use more shells first. Make the shell thicker first and then go for high infill. Um, and yes, that is going to be it for today. I will be, I will be seeing all you tomorrow. Uh, same time, same place, a well, new URL, but I'll be posting it on, on Twitter again and it will pop up in your feed uh, if you're subscribed and if you have notifications enabled. You should do that so you don't miss these streams. And yes, tomorrow, actually, let me, let me give you guys a, a small sneak preview. Um, Z-axis will be assembling this thing. That looks, uh, that looks like fun. That looks like one chunky boy. All right, that's for tomorrow. Wow, lots of bearings. 
that's going to be the, the center assembly right here. So yes, um, 7 p.m. CEST is when I'll start the stream tomorrow. See you then. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Get subscribed, Patreon, YouTube members, uh, stream tips um, in tomorrow's stream, maybe. Thank you for all that, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.